Hi, and welcome to the Catalyst Overview at SC20. First of all, what is Catalyst? Well, it's a framework that comes with Pairview that you can use inside your simulation to perform analysis and visualizations while your simulation is running uh, and using all of the power of Pairview. It's production ready. It's been scaled to over a million MPI ranks. It's deployed on clusters across the world and it's won several awards. And the way it works is by generating artifacts of various sorts. So on the top left, you can see that we have just an image. If you save one of those out every time step, you get a nice animation. On the top right, although it's uh, just kind of a placeholder, you can save out geometry, not just the image, but the entire unstructured or structured grid data and fields on it, and uh, explore that um, after the fact, although that can typically be very large in terms of space requirements, so people don't do that very much. You can also save out analysis results, like this distribution function that you can see on the bottom left picture. And uh, you can also save out what are called cinema artifacts, which are shown on the bottom right. And that's not a single image, but a sequence of images taken from different camera viewpoints of different scenes. So uh, different portions of a pair view pipeline, such as an ISO contour, um, or a, a colored uh, surface extract, all of those are saved out as their own image and they can be composed afterwards because we save the depth information. So at each pixel, we know whether one image should overlap the other or vice versa. And because of that, you can explore um, after the simulation is already run by just uh, changing some of the um, images that are shown um, using the panel on the, the top right here. And it also lets you control time and the camera angle. So you can see that there's quite a bit of flexibility. It's not as much as saving out all the geometry, but it saves a lot of space compared to saving out the entire simulation state at every, every time step. So that's what Catalyst does. Uh, let's talk about how to instrument your simulation with Catalyst. So Usually that's done by writing an adapter, and that adapter will interact with your simulation at three points. Um, at initialization, uh, you'll provide an MPI communicator. If you're running in distributed memory mode, you'll um, add some analysis scripts, and then at each time step, you'll run an execute method that invokes Catalyst to perform the actual work using the simulation state. And then finally, before your simulation shuts down, you'll call finalize. That provides things that were accumulating results uh, to write those, those final accumulations out before the simulation exits. So as the simulation is running, um, it provides a, a floating point time value, a, an integer time step at each time step, um, whether or not it should, the output should be forced at that time step. And this is useful if you were saving out every nth time step, you can um, tell it on the last time step, I want you to write out even if it's not um, you know, the, the right time to, to save data because uh, the simulation is ending. You can also, um, the simulation also provides grid data, so the geometric description of the domain and field values defined on that domain. The adapter provides paths to the pipelines to execute. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then um, it, all of the data from the simulation, it, it provides that to the, uh, the Catalyst framework. And the Catalyst framework determines, using those scripts, what has to actually be fetched from the simulation to perform an analysis or visualization at that particular time step. So if there's overhead involved in the simulation um, to create a description of the, say the unstructured grid connectivity or some other uh, information in the state that's not in a form that is easily parsed by Catalyst, that overhead isn't invo um, involved at every time step only when it's needed. So, Pairview 5.9 has some um, new additions. Uh, we've simplified the way Python scripting works, and we've also changed the way that extracts are, are saved and defined. 
So you can see we, on the left in the pipeline browser here, we have a pipeline and there's these two additional pipeline objects called VTP1 and then PNG1 beneath it that are highlighted. Um, VTP1 is an indication that we're going to save some geometry out and PNG1 is an indication we want to save an image out. And for each of those, you can see PNG1 is highlighted. So the time step information for when you want to start saving images, stop saving images, and how frequently you want to save images, um, you know, whether it's every time step or every other, um, all of that information is configurable as, a pipe, as if it were a pipeline object. And once you have all of that configured, then you can, in the toolbar, click on the Save Catalyst State, and that will generate a zip file for you. Uh, the zip file contains uh, all of the Python scripts that our PairView can automatically generate um, to prepare your simulation state into a, a visualization pipeline. So next I'm going to um, show you a demonstration of PairView Live. Um, that is a technique that allows Catalyst to connect to a running instance of PairView. So I'm speeding this up so you don't have to, to watch all of my, my slow mouse clicks. And I've started the simulation in a terminal window. You can see that once it finishes its initial time step, I have PairView configured to automatically pause the simulation while I prepare the visualization that I want in live, and then I tell it to continue. And as it continues, you'll see the simulation state updated whenever uh, it writes out a new time step. So that was a hydrological simulation uh, called Parflow. Uh, there are a bunch of simulations that are instrumented, and there's some new work that you can see at the in-situ analysis and visualization workshop session at SC20. So please join us there. The URL is below, and thank you.